Iranian-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon is making a wild attempt to draw Israel into a war with them, using the border disagreements as an excuse to rally the Lebanese public to embrace war efforts. Flare-ups on Israel's northern border with Hezbollah are becoming frequent as Nasrallah. Hezbollah's supreme leader senses weakness in Israel due to the internationally driven coup that's unfolding on the streets of Israel. Stay tuned for the full lowdown on the unfolding drama on Israel's northern border. I'm Joshua, and this is The Israel Guys. Yowzers. Well, that is not what you think it is. We'll get to it in just a minute. But first, welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda. You should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Diving in, that was Hezbollah terrorist on Israel's northern border uh, attempting to plant explosives in order to either kill IDF soldiers, uh, breach the fence, and therefore, or abduct IDF soldiers. Um, the tensions in the north are heating up uh, dr drastically. Um, what's really crazy about this uh, video you just saw is, is that this is actually the IDF using a non-lethal means uh, to keep Hezbollah terrorist from breaching the fence. What in the world's going on and why would Israel be using non-lethal means? We'll get more into that here uh, momentarily. Uh, I didn't even know that existed. A non-lethal bomb that uh, you would shoot at your border fence to send terrorists that are trying to harm your country uh, fleeing. Uh, it seemed to work, obviously. They did take off running and that was good. Uh, but uh, as we see tensions rising, not only is Hezbollah attempting to attack uh, Israel on uh, the border fence, we've also seen rockets being shot just last week. There's a rocket shot into Israel from uh, Hezbollah's uh, uh, southern side, Israel's northern border there. Um, we've also seen a crazy uptick in the last year that should be noted now. Hezbollah has built over 27 new military posts on Israel's uh, northern border, their southern border, as we just mentioned. Uh, the whole situation there is going crazy. This is all in violation to the UN uh, uh, agreements that Hezbollah Lebanon has. So uh, we're seeing a little bit of a meltdown there. Uh, and of course, we are not seeing anything from the UN condemning these attacks, which is also uh, concerning. Well, we, we do see uh, the UN along with the US condemning Israel uh, for holding the line on their border and actually pushing Israel to uh, secede to uh, Hezbollah's request. Okay, what are these flare-ups and why are they becoming more frequent? Um, this is a big, big issue that we have. Uh, Lebanon seems to be trying to pull Israel into a full-fledged war front. Uh, this is really uh, a kind of crazy situation. This all started uh, back in uh, March when we had the bomb that was placed on the side of the road. It was uh, leaked into Israel. They, they got it. They smuggled it through the northern border and actually exploded on one of Israel's northern roads. Now, that was one of the first uh, flares uh, that begin this, this northern uh, crisis that's happening on Israel's northern border. Uh, once this happened, Israel started focusing major attention there. We saw that in the public. We see that we've been seeing it in the news ever since. Um, just as of recently, there's been a tent. We've talked about it here on the show. There's a Hezbollah outpost uh, that has been placed in Israeli territory on the northern border. So uh, this is actually Hezbollah fighters that are in Israeli territory. That's kind of a big deal. Uh, why are we not seeing the UN condemning this and why are they still there? We're talking about uh, over a month of presence of his, his bala fighters in Israeli territory, uh, and Israel has not yet blown the thing up. Anywhere else in the world, that would be completely uh, dismantled immediately. Obviously, there's more behind the story, and we're going to dig into that again. Mohammed Raid, he's Lebanese uh, parliament member uh, for Hezbollah. So yes, Hezbollah has basically taken over all of Lebanon. Uh, the terror faction, obviously, they're backed by Iran. They've taken over uh, Le the Lebanese whole governing system. Obviously, there's a little bit of crisis there, but they basically have the thumb uh, on the on the Lebanese government and can do whatever they want. Uh, this member, um, Mohammed Raid, uh, he tells Israel, "If you do not want war, shut up and walk back," demanding. Uh, get, get, and he says this in concerning Israel's demand to remove the outpost. Uh, so this is the parliament of Lebanon. The parliament is telling uh, Israel, if you don't want war, shut up and walk back. 
meaning allow we're we're in charge we're taking over um we're going to tell you where our border is we're not going to accept the border uh that was drawn and we're going to uh not even listen to the UN and these uh these agreements that have been made uh, beforehand so we have a lot going on the camp remains intact now a few more reasons there's 16 different border disputes that are going on right now. And here, again, a massive, unfortunately, the UN decided uh, again. When did the UN ever decide anything in Israel's favor? Well, it just doesn't really happen. Uh, Israel, uh, The UN decided that Israel was again in the fault and that the land uh, Israel's holding there uh, is actually Lebanon. So they've gone back, said, well, Israel, you should relinquish these, these areas and give it to Hezbollah. Who in the what in the world? My gracious, is that not re- just absolutely crazy that the UN would be telling Israel to give land to a terror organization? Uh, go figure. But that's where the UN is these days. Uh, so 16 different border disputes. Hezbollah, uh, the government, is now Hezbollah is calling on the Lebanese government because there's a little bit of uh, obviously tensions there, but they're because Hezbollah is actually in charge, but they're calling on the Lebanese government, they're strong arming them in to uh, act immediately to liberate these areas. They're saying uh, that these border disputes, uh, that they should go in and strong arm Israel to uh, give them these areas militarily. They're calling for conflict that the Lebanese government should immediately attack Israel and take these territories. Uh, here's what, here's, this is really nuts. Construction. So Israel's been constructing a, uh, a border there for some time now. Now, uh, this is, this is a really crazy thing because Hezbollah is calling Israel to halt the border. Of course, Hezbollah is causing, is calling for Israel to halt, halt the border, uh, because they don't want anything in the way of them being able to smuggle bombs as we saw in March. Uh, of course, that would be their thing. So now they're calling for Israel to uh, halt uh, the border uh, construction. And uh, the U.S., the U.S. of A., the United States of America, is mediating this process uh, with the border crisis and is agreeing, again, just like the U.N., with Hezbollah on their terms, okay, and pressuring Israel to end the border construction. So Israel's pulling this border uh, construction together to make a firm border there that there will be no smuggling through. Uh, and the U.S. is is asking Israel uh, to agree to Hezbollah's terms. Now, what in the world is going on when we have America and the U.N. agreeing with a terrorist organization uh, on the terrorist mandates? That's a weakness if we ever saw it, my gracious. So uh, we also have on the front right now, Lebanon seems to be trying to persuade its public, the public opinion, to move towards uh, in favor of a war against Israel, uh, so those are those are serious uh, things on the on the Israeli Lebanon front. Hezbollah is seizing the opportunity, as we spoke about the conflict between Hezbollah and the actual Lebanese government. Hezbollah is seizing the opportunity of weakness and the crisis that rests in Lebanon and has been for some time. Uh, they're using this border crisis with Israel. They're, they're creating a border crisis with Israel in order to destabilize the government and the people, the whole land of Lebanon, uh, in order to take more power. Don't ever mistake their real intentions. The real intentions of the Iranian-backed Hezbollah group is to actually take more control over Lebanon. Many of the Lebanese do not like Hezbollah, but these are the attempts by Hezbollah to grab more. They can try to use this as an attempt to destabilize the current government and grab more uh, more uh, power. Uh, so this is exactly what they're doing, trying to incite war against Israel, uh, trying to incite uh, the people of Lebanon against the people of Israel through the 16 border uh, disagreements. Um, these disagreements have been there for some time, but they're flaring up now with the intentions of Hezbollah to create the destabilization uh, that they're wishing for in order to destabilize the Lebanese government and therefore take more power. Hey guys, we'll be right back, but first, in the scorching heat, of the Israeli summer, the brave IDF soldiers stand guard defending the Holy Land of Israel. Picture yourself in full battle gear and temperatures surpassing 100 degrees. The weight of armor, boots, and weaponry presses against you. That's the reality of our soldiers. They face it every day. But Israeli technology has come to their rescue. A revolutionary substance called quick snow has been harnessed to create the cool collar. It cools the neck as well as the rest of the body and enhances physical stamina and mental acuity. 
You can relieve an IDF soldier by donating a high-tech, Israeli-made cool collar. This remarkable invention will keep our soldiers cool and focused as they face the challenges of their duties. Donate a cool collar to an IDF soldier and fulfill the words of Jeremiah, for he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes. Join us today in equipping our soldiers with life-changing cool collars. Your donation will make a tangible impact on their well-being and the security of the land and people of Israel. Be a part of this vital mission, protecting God's land and helping our brave soldiers survive the summer heat. Click the link in the description below to donate a cool collar and keep our soldiers cool, focused, and ready to defend Israel. Okay, um, now this is very interesting. How would Lebanon fare if they actually did attack Israel? Now there's two fronts to this and we're gonna, we'll are gonna we lay it out for you. Uh, Lebanon, uh, as we spoke about, is currently trying to, <laughs> to get their public to agree. But currently, a lot of these uh, attacks that are happening, are they're actually using fireworks against the IDF. Now, to me, that's a sign of, uh, <laughs> uh, you're not very well funded, you don't have a very good military if you're actually going and fighting the IDF with fireworks. Um, now that's happening uh, quite a bit on the, on the, uh, on Israel's northern border. Um, so Hezbollah forces are using fireworks. Now, I don't want to mislead you. They do have more than that. Uh, and, uh, on the globalfirepower.com, you can go and see the different rankings of these different nations. And according to them, Lebanon ranks, uh, 111 out of 145 most powerful nations in the world. So pretty far down the list, a very unsophisticated uh, military. Uh, now, I would, I'll couple that with Hezbollah ranks 48. So Hezbollah is much stronger than the Lebanese uh, official government's uh, military uh, there. So they're, they basically don't have a functioning good hardcore uh, military that's respected among the world. But Hezbollah ranks you know, not not good, but problematic, uh, 48 uh, out of uh, 145. Now, here's the deal. Israel ranks number 18. So, and this is ranking, and who knows if this is that accurate, but it gives us an idea, uh, according to the globalfirepower.com. Now, uh, here's the big problem. Obviously, uh, Israel ranks very high in the world defense and defending the nation of Israel, and they're continuing to grow rapidly uh, in, a, in a massive uh, good direction in this sense. So obviously there's no problem with Israel uh, defeating any kind of uprising from Lebanon. Here is the big, big problem. And this is when we look at Iran and we look at America and its support for Iran, kind of veiled support of Iran. Um, when we see them lurking towards nuclear power and these things, and they're backing these, these proxy groups around Israel with the intent of harming and destroying the nation of Israel. So if we look at Iran and how it ranks on the global stage, uh, according to the globalfirepower.com, we'll see that it actually ranks 17. Now, that's problematic, whether it ranks or outranks I would disagree with this, thinking that Israel much outranks the superiority uh, uh, of, of the Iranian military. So, um, but this caused a problem. Iran is big, and Iran does have weapons, and they are putting these weapons into the local proxy groups, and they are have uh, they do have connections uh, with larger governments around the world, including their their uh, pack uh, with with uh, Russia. So these kind of things are something. Now maybe you can understand why Israel is using a non-lethal bomb on its northern border to try to uh, fight the Hezbollah terrorist. They're trying to de-escalate. Now, in my opinion, there should be a massive uh, clap of hands from the UN and all those so-called peacemakers around the globe by Israel using non-lethal means to bring peace to the northern border. You will never hear that. You'll never hear that, I, that Israel is trying to de-escalate and not ex escalate the situation. Uh, on the other hand, Lebanon is escalating, trying to incite the people against Israel, trying to incite a war with Israel, trying to make problems where there really is no problems. And the UN will never agree uh, to uh, condemn these facts that are on the ground. Uh, so this is very concerning on the world stage. And the reason why Israel is using these lethal bomb, non-lethal bombs is in order to lower the pressure, take down the pressure. If they go in and kill some uh, uh, terrorist, which 
you know, we could all agree that these this should happen, that terrorists should not be allowed to just fight Israel uh, randomly and strike randomly at a at a especially when there's there's they're attacking these uh, small Israeli villages in the north uh, by rocket fire. These things this cannot be tolerated. Um, but we do see that uh, the IDF is trying to hold the line there. At the same time, the world is not backing Israel where they should be, and this is a major problem, and we will stay tuned to see what actually unfolds. Will the IDF be successful in de-escalating the situation as the world attempts to escalate the situation in Israel's north? Uh, Stay tuned to the Israel guys for a lot more on this as it uh, unfolds. In conclusion, guys, (sighs) Israel's facing a possible war with Hezbollah, uh, on the northern border. Uh, it seems that the U.S. and the U.N. are siding with Lebanese terrorist group Hezbollah instead of their ally, well, American ally, Israel. Very unfortunate. Um, and as we just spoke about, Israel is balancing a lot more than what may meet the eye, uh, which explains why Israel is using these uh, non-lethal bombs to try to de-escalate. Guys, as always, let's get the conversation go- going and subscribe. Get the get the uh, comments. Don't forget. Let's keep this uh, going. We need you to get the word out there. This kind of content's not coming out anywhere else. Unaware of it. Uh, just truth as we see it. We're on the ground here, and this needs to get out. Let's stop listening to all the lies and the rhetoric, the uh, propaganda that's going out on all of these networks. Guys, let's dig into the truth. What's actually going on here? Uh, How is Israel shining as a great beacon of light in a very, very dark world? You're going to get that here at the Israel Guys. As always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in Israel's heartland and all across the land of Israel. We'll be back every Monday through Thursday through Friday with your direct connection to the people and land of Israel. Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, Israel's biblical heartland. Unfortunately, hardly any of the two and a half million tourists that visit Israel every year come to the place most of the world calls the West Bank. The reality is that more than 80% of the Bible was either written or occurred here, and we consider it one of Israel's best kept gems. We don't know of any other Israel tour that focuses exclusively on Judea and Samaria other than the heartland experience. Two parts tour, one part volunteer program. The Heartland Experience is designated to introduce you to the land and people that call this place home in an unforgettable and completely unique way. We've gotten incredible reviews from previous Heartland Experience programs that we hosted in 2022. And our next trip is November 27th through December 10th. To find out more and apply for this trip, visit serveisrael.com volunteer or click the link in the description below.